There are five hepatitis viruses defined by types A, B, C, D, and E. Hepatitis C, the whole world, about 160 million people suffer from hepatitis C worldwide currently. And the problem with hepatitis C, it can be chronic, meaning it never goes away in your system. Now, uh, hepatitis A, on the other hand, is spread uh, fecal oral, meaning that you have to ingest it. And it's a bit, uh, it's self-limiting, doesn't last for too long. It can be quite severe sometimes, but in rarer cases. Hepatitis B and E are a lot rarer than the other uh, kinds of uh, hepatitis and uh, generally less severe. Types B and C are of significant concern to medical practitioners and patients alike, since a high proportion of people infected with these viruses may not experience symptoms at the early stage of the disease and only become aware of their conditions when they are chronically ill. These two viruses are the leading cause of liver cirrhosis and cancer, accounting for almost 80% of all liver cancer cases. Hepatitis is inflammation, more or less swelling and dysfunction of the liver cells. When this happens, then they form fibrous tissue and they cease becoming normal cells. Now that formation of fibrous tissue where they shrink and become almost like fiber and non-functional cells, that is what is called cirrhosis. Now over time, liver cells that have become cirrhotic, uh, then they can undergo some mutation and some changes that makes them abnormal cells that replicate uh, in an uncontrolled fashion, and that is cancer. So it's actually a continuum where first you have inflammation in hepatitis, then you have scarring in uh, cirrhosis, then you have um, uh, hepatoma or hepatocellular carcinoma, cancers, uh, dysfunctional, dysregulated systems. And what we have is anywhere between uh, six days and 21 days before you have a severe illness, but it varies from one kind of hepatitis to another. Uh, so from infection to full manifestation of the signs takes anywhere between six days and 21 days in a patient. People can get hepatitis from either infected bodily fluids or contaminated food and water, depending on the category. More than 35 viruses cause uh, hepatitis. Then we have uh, more than um, eight bacterial infections commonly cause this, a lot of fungal infections. We have uh, um, uh, protozoal infections, these are uh, parasites, and um, other parasitic infections that uh, uh, affect the liver and cause inflammation. Beyond that, we have poisons and toxins. Then we have um, industrial chemicals and waste products, some chlorinated hydrocarbons, uh, which also are known to cause, um, amongst other things, cancers. And uh, uh, yeah, pretty much uh, certain drugs as well. Paracetamol is notorious and a few other drugs used for treating various illnesses. Viral hepatitis is among the top 10 infectious killer disease. Approximately 500 million people worldwide are living with either hepatitis B or hepatitis C. Then hepatitis is a very serious disease and it can wipe out a majority of the cells in a very short time. Now most hepatitis last between two and six weeks, though anything up to six months is called acute hepatitis and anything longer than that is called um, uh, chronic hepatitis. Uh, some of the earliest signs are the same signs we see in most illnesses where you have uh, nausea and vomiting and you have general weakness and uh, a, bi a bit of fatigue and maybe headaches, joint pains, fevers, all these are common consumer signs, especially in the viral hepatitis. Then you have yellowness that can progress in quite a number of people and as the waste products accumulate, then you have uh, effects that make you less conscious and you can go into coma and uh, over the next couple of days then uh, the coma can deepen and beyond that uh, quite a number of patients don't survive. One of the major causes that Dr. Victor Ngani, chairman of Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentists Union, identifies alcohol and herbal medicine as the major causes of hepatitis. 30% of the world's population suffer from alcoholic hepatitis. Now that's a pretty large number of people and um, the good thing is that most of them are asymptomatic. But when you have symptomatic alcoholic liver disease, where your liver, um, you, you become, uh, you have deep jaundice, that's yellowness of the eyes and the skin, and uh, your blood is not clotting properly, or you go into a coma because of alcohol hepatitis, the mortality from that alcohol hepatitis is up to 60% uh, in some centers. It's quite a serious disease, and many people lose their lives regularly in our country, and they're not very much aware of this. Whatever drug you ingest has to be excreted. And one of the key ways of doing this is, in fact, uh, the liver. So 
the biggest challenge a lot of herbal medicines may work in killing the previous uh, the disease for which they're taken but they'll affect your liver and your kidney and uh, more so and more often it's the liver that suffers while many people worry more about contracting AIDS than hepatitis, the reality is that every year, 1.5 million people worldwide die from either hepatitis B or C faster than they would from HIV AIDS. But you need a very small amount of hepatitis uh, C virus to transmit to somebody else. Similarly, all health workers are at risk uh, of hepatitis B and C. Anybody who comes in contact with this uh, generally at risk. And uh, that's why the spread is quite uh, extensive. However, the vast majority of people infected with hepatitis are unaware, undiagnosed and untreated. Just weakness, headache, joint pains, fever, which many people will begin treating themselves to malaria and typhoid. And by the time they come, they already have yellowness and they're going into coma. Dr. Victor Father says that even with this alarming rate of new infections and deaths caused by this silent but killer disease, there are challenges that are faced when it comes to the treatment of this deadly disease, which can also be very expensive. Certain hepatitis are self-limiting. For example, hepatitis A, which is very common in children, uh, is normally quite severe and uh, quite um, acute, but most children are able to survive this process within two weeks without um, treatment apart from supportive care for the liver. And the supportive care we are talking about here is to reduce the amount of proteins, which will reduce the um, uh, demand on the liver to clear waste products of proteins, and at the same time give a high carbohydrate diet. Uh, there are some uh, viral hepatitis that will respond to uh, antiviral treatment. Unfortunately, they are extremely expensive drugs. But I think only the political elite in our country can afford now, and uh, I mean ordinary monoinches will never be able to afford that currently unless we take up measures to make that affordable and accessible. Like most of the other organs, we don't have a replacement for the liver. We are not able to support the liver in, uh, in um, uh, the way we can do dialysis for non-functional kidneys. We can't put you on a machine to help you, uh, your liver work, the way you could do for a person who's not breathing, put on a ventilator. Again, we are very far behind in this. We don't have a transplant policy locally, and we are not uh, engaging in um, uh, recipient, uh, I mean, uh, organ harvesting, nor are we training enough specialists to engage in this. But uh, if you got a liver transplant, it would be a definitive cure for a lot of these problems. We don't have a single uh, PCR machine in the country today. Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, get this. We still send samples out to South Africa. So it can't be adopted wide scale. Therefore, only by increasing awareness of the different forms of hepatitis and how they can be prevented and treated is the only step towards saving thousands of lives. Uh, the Western countries have had a significant cut in general um, uh, incidence of, of these kinds of illnesses, hepatitis as, uh, as I referred to. But um, in our country, our measures are quite behind. Public education is not where it's supposed to be. Diagnostic and supportive skills are not where they're supposed to be. We still have inaccessible drugs. We don't have enough uh, equipment to make the correct diagnosis at the right time. And uh, we do have a long way to go, hopefully, with the correct policies. Then we may begin to see this being availed to the Nerimona Inche. Then, uh, as regards alcohol hepatitis, the understanding that alcohol in excess is a serious poison that causes death for very many families needs to be out there. People need to understand that your liver can only take so much alcohol. And whereas you feel good and you feel um, you engaged in a social activity, it's a real risk to your, to your health. And uh, you need to take it in moderation. The measures people can do, number one, educate yourself. Number two, uh, proper storage of, of uh, grains. Number three, environmental pollution uh, to avoid all these hazards, chlorinated hydrocarbons and other uh, pollutants easily accessible in the environment. Number four, uh, limit your alcohol intake. And number five, uh, early diagnosis when you run to a hospital, at which case, uh, at which point you may be advised on how to not transmit to other people. Given the scale of the epidemic with one in 12 people infected and recent advances in prevention and treatment, the World Health Assembly in 2010 designated 28th July as World Hepatitis Day. The day serves to promote greater understanding of hepatitis as a global public health problem and to stimulate the strengthening of preventive and control measures against infection in countries throughout the world. Violet Makendo, GBS.